I'm just based normally down the road where I have my textile equipment, my sewing machines and all of my fabrics. So what I wanted to do was, you know, to respect the beauty of the space, but also to kind of intervene in a way that would showcase the way in which I work. A labyrinth has only one entry point and one exit point, and it's meant to be more of a meditative or a spiritual journey. The maze is something that, you know, someone would encounter and uh, meet uh, maybe different obstacles in its path in order to kind of find their way to freedom. The last, uh, last one. In the center of the space that you would encounter and try to overcome. But for me, I wanted this to function more like an unfolding, um, non-linear, image-based narrative. Every community has a history of oral storytelling, written stories, mythologies, folklore, folk clothing, you know, traditions for certain um, archetypes within society or how they're used in parables or um, folk tales or mythology, really as ways to explore the human condition and tell stories about ourselves. And I think for me in the past few years, I've really leaned into thinking about animals because it's a easier way to think about things that are happening contemporaneously in society without being too direct. I think that using animals as a filter to talk about things that are happening culturally, it's more this idea that I have a connection to an ancestral past. I'm very invested in the idea of ancestors and it's not for me an idea of blood ancestors. Ancestors for me are all the people that have lived previously on this planet and ways in which we can either do better by them, think about them and um, move forward in a way that, you know, is a more positive direction for our... So I've used it as a symbol within my work to think about ideas of home, communication receptors, this idea that you're able to walk through and enter maybe another dimension, you're able to enter another time timeline. But for me, this is of course kind of the most important painting I have a real kinship and kind of um, emotional attachment to these animals because I feel that they are living in a shared space with us and we are also encroaching in on their environments and they are having to act in ways to ensure their own survival. But actually its main desire was to become a human and so it had a really strong human condition and that's also the way in which I see urban foxes in London. It's very often conflated with the image of a woman. So it's this interesting idea that the idea of an evil creature is associated with the image of a woman. And now if we take that a step further and think about women who are older, you know, there comes another stereotype or kind of repeated idea that I use the figure of my maternal grandmother or the idea of her as a stepping stone over my mom so I could talk about this interest in exploration to a family history that maybe was partially fictional. From a human perspective, to think about the worlds in which um, lots of other beings are inhabiting that actually have nothing to do with us at the center because in many ways the way in which we live our lives and construct our societies are us in the middle and everything else is kind of circumnavigating that or below us in terms of importance. I wanted to ruminate over ideas that I've been thinking about for the past seven years, relationship to animals, the idea of the grandmother figure as being an apex powerful person, you know, the focus on wayward characters. I think these characters are reoccurring motifs because ultimately they do represent the underdog. For me, it's they become signs or symbols for persons that are considered waywardly and unmanageable and uncontrolled and ultimately kind of transgressing against societal norms. And so, you know, there is a much larger complex kind of narrative around that. But my stumbling upon this person, you know, was quite significant to me and I was very much interested in the idea of um, the transmission of knowledge, particularly from a matrilineal perspective. I grew up in a family full of women and that to me was just the natural way in which I've always sought to be guided or receive information or you know, receive knowledge.
I'm also interested in kind of, you know, women who are older that are also wild. For me, that's really interesting. And again, this conflation of um, the relationship between animals who are maligned in that way. Words that might seem pejorative that we would attribute to creatures that we think of as beastly. What does it mean to be a beast, right? You know, especially like animals or characters that again stray from what we consider within the majority of society to be acting correctly. So the idea of being like a heathen or a beast is basically not to be following the status quo of the religious belief that is in the place of power, for example. I think for me, the main impetus in the beginning when I started working with ideas of folklore, again, comes from my interest in identity and they are based off of um, loosely based off of Korean textiles uh, called pojagi, so basically a type of, I would call it a textile abstraction in a very short term. I was always really interested in how folk clothing had such a deeper, more personal, rich meaning and history for people globally, and how we were able to tell our communities who we were, who our families were, just by the different designs that were inlaid and it's a way in which we are supposed to impart this type of value system in communities of how we should live a good life and be good to one another. And you know, I think unconsciously, maybe it's my own way of dealing with the kind of turbulence that we face today. Nine tales, tall tales, trickster, mongrel, beast, undulating titles. I think it comes from my interest in like lyricism within music and then I guess trying to attach myself to something that I can feel like solidifies the concept of my work even if it's done in a more abstract way. And I think the reason why it's easier for us as readers to absorb that information is because we can look at the cruelties and ways in which we still behave and perpetuate and also the ills of the past and think about how visiting my exhibition would be when someone who, you know, irrespective of where their family culture or history comes from, they feel a connection to the work because they see themselves.